then expanded into the server capability. And from there, um, this team also expanded the, uh, the technical competency to build the hard IP and the soft IP designs that gets feed into multiple different products. And then um, as uh, Intel venture into IoT, there's the IoT software component and also design component that came into picture, followed by the FPGA and uh, the new memory technology, which was called 3D Crosspoint. And the latest one being, you know, working with external foundry on top of just the Intel um, internal foundry itself. So many, many different um, competency encompassing all the various discipline and products that we are delivering. Next. So now, if you look at it, what does this mean to you? All right. If you are starting a career, um, why would I actually um, encourage you to consider Intel design and development? You know, one of the primary reasons we talked about just now is not just on um, the technical competencies itself, it's also the opportunity, the enrichment, and uh, on top of that, right, for fresh grads like you, um, you may or may not have heard of um, this like uh, on-job training type of program where we call it graduate training. You come in and, uh, you know, Intel will continue to provide you training on all the latest uh, industry leaning techno leading technology and methodology so that you are able to uh, not only perform your job but continue to add on to your skill sets. There are many various uh, skill sets that are all the um, functions or the group here require in order to develop competitive products, right? So looking at it, right? Let's say if today you have a degree in double E, computer architecture, computer engineering, mechatronics, anything that are related to electronics, electrical, and relevant field, there are multiple disciplines that you can get into, right? Um, just to give you a few here, you look at it, you, you start with like um, logic analog design, where along with this design, in fact, it is coupled very closely with the uh, pre-silicon validation as well, where you will do design. And at the same time, you would also um, do validation. So from there, you would be able to get that kind of exposure to understand that in order to do a good design, you need to make it testable, right? And um, that was from the logic, the front end perspective, digital. And of course, there's always this structural design where you are looking at um, design from a physical perspective, looking at um, synthesis, a gate level, or even um, having that exposure into the timing convergence, placement, routing, you know, all, all the um, design aspect, but really looking at it from a physical perspective. And then, also, you know, if you have interest into doing um, just specifically uh, IP block, uh, getting specialized into very specific interfaces or protocols, there's always very specific IP block designs and validation that are available, right? Now, um, on top of that, then uh, it goes to the manufacturing, testing, uh, where, um, you know, we would still be doing um, the so-called design for manufacturing, design for testing, and then ensuring that, you know, the product um, test time is really, really short uh, to guarantee a fast turnaround. And as I mentioned just now, on top of that, there's the platform design that comes into picture as well. And with IoT expanding, you have the opportunity to look at um, the uh, usage model, what are some of the IoT solutions that you can bring to uh, end user along with the um, software development part of it. And finally, you know, um, even getting yourself involved in microarchitecture, uh, sorry, uh, customer support. And the piece that I missed out just now on the microarchitecture, this is like um, the start of all the design, right? Before you go into design, you really need to have a view of what microarchitecture is about. But all in all, if you look at all this competency and area, you start somewhere. You start as beginner, 
you learn up your knowledge and as you learn you either move from one um, one block to the adjacent block or you actually deepen your knowledge you become the key expert in these blocks right so every one of these blocks have uh, provides ample opportunity for you to grow in depth just growing deep and become in depth expert in any of this area where you become the go-to person and even in uh, Malaysia itself, just to share with you, we also have a number of uh, principal engineers. And what do I mean by principal engineers? You know, these are the people who are the real content expert, the real guru behind all the work that um, we do. And uh, they are not only the uh, expert within Intel, but in general, they are seen as the expert within the industry itself highly respected and you know it's um i would say i will put it this way personally for me it's such a privilege to be working around the smartest people in the world okay now um shall we move on next page so you know giving you a little bit more uh information and also uh, so that you know what is the impact of Intel in Malaysia other than just delivering um, products um, you know profiting from it growing in terms of revenue and company portfolio we also um, have a lot of um, uh, contribution to nation building and also in terms of the CSR itself right if you look at it just from uh, on the left hand side I talk about more than 5 billion USD just now. It's about ringgit 21 billion already invested in Malaysia with more than 10,000 employees in various different groups. These are all employment opportunities. And some numbers here. If you really want to count the amount of income tax paid just for in, from Intel employees, it amounts to more than 100 million. And also, it supports this local supplier ecosystem where um, there's more than 1 billion being spent on um, all these local suppliers. And we're not talking about one or two, we're talking about more than a thousand. Also, from the human development side and uh, CSR, from a patent itself, right? Malaysia engineers, Intel Malaysia engineers have generated more than 460 patents to date and still counting. Every year, the number grows. Um, there are about 25 universities that have um, this linkage to Intel to uh, you know, collaborate and uh, look at the co-curriculum and also attend Intel curriculum workshops annually. This has been done since uh, 20, 2007 until today. Also not forgetting in terms of uh, giving back to the community. Intel is also big on um, this community work, have already contributed more than 800,000 hours since 2016 when we, 2006 when we started this. And if you count by the employee itself, um, about 40% of the employees actually um, have one way or another volunteered their time to involve in this community work. And also under the so-called Intel Involved Matching Grant Program, more than 11 million have been dispersed to the community already. So these are the group of people that um, have benefited from the Intel contribution. Um, and if you count how many of them, uh, we can easily give you a ballpark number of more than 200 schools and NGOs. All right. And what about the activities itself? It's um, no less than 2,000 that have been um, organized by Intel. And all these workshops, uh, the um, technical collaborations, events um, that are happening, at least, you know, there are 15 of them every year. But we are talking about annual. Every year, there is something that's happening, and it benefits not only university, Specifically, if I mean university, it means you, right? And also on um, all the uh, public events that Intel organize. All right, next.
So this is my last point here, really, um, you know, to uh, share with you on how Intel gets involved in many different areas, not just um, in the business, but also enabling the whole ecosystem, continue to develop talent and giving back to community. In a way, it's really growing your career and still, you know, staying connected with the rest of the world and the rest of the community, right? Many different programs that are being run um, and you are free to join any of them, you know, as, as part of Intel family like the Innovate Malaysia design competition. They have, um, there's this IoT forum. There's the um, in Intel Ministry of Education elite internship program, mostly targeting the undergraduates. There's the Semicon Southeast Asia. So it covers not just Malaysia, but all the countries in Southeast Asia. The MDC STEM program, these are the ones that um, where Intel reaches out to the schools to uh, cultivate the um, interest in STEM starting from young. And Intel is also very engaged with um, the state initiative of uh, developing Penang as a smart city. And then you look at the happy faces, all these uh, passionate um, employees who also continue to contribute and volunteer their time for community work. Um, likewise, on the last page, uh, the last picture there where you can see all the um, employees getting involved in the uh, volunteer matching program, right? So all in all, really, it's work hard, play hard. And definitely, you know, one of the perfect place where you can, you can start, grow your career and continue to grow for many, many years to come. So, yep, I'm reaching the end of my presentation. I guess we do have some time for um, Q&A. Yes, correct. Um, we have we have a couple of uh, time for come Q and A. So probably um, so for those who are actually in this particular webinar, do feel free to actually uh, have your question right here where I can see them, and then I'll actually probably gonna like read it through, and then your phone will be gonna apply, uh, reply on that. Okay, so I'm actually looking uh, right now. So. All right. So probably the first question would be. Uh, how to apply Intel under GT program? Um, okay, so if you go to www.intel.com slash jobs, I believe you can write in from there, deposit, deposit your resume, and Intel Malaysia staffing team will pick up from there. Okay. Um, Ravi, hopefully this answered your question. So I probably I can top up what uh, Yefun has mentioned. So probably uh, we did post our job posting graduate training program uh, in this particular graduate uh, website portal. So probably uh, on top of actually what uh, Yefun has mentioned in terms of slash jobs, Intel slash jobs, you can actually probably have your resumes uh, deposit there as well, just to assure that we have your profile captured with us. Okay. And then the next question would be, may I know whether Intel has any offer for virtual internship? Yeah, um, this is actually a very interesting scenario. Uh, in the past, before COVID-19 happened, you know, all the internship were all done physically that uh, we require the student uh, to be with Intel physically because a lot of time, right, when you go to internship, the goal is really to give you a taste of working life, um, to give you the exposure of uh, interacting with the rest of the engineers to also watch everyone in action. But now situation has really changed that, um, you know, everyone's working remotely. It's going to be a very different situation. So we are continuously evaluating if there are any specific internship opportunity that may be possible. So stay tuned, you know, um, opportunities may be opening up. Okay, all right. So the next question would be, May I ask if technical graduate trainee program will have any roles for mechanical engineering? So for mechanical engineering, um, this is what we do. As I talk about it just now, a lot of the uh, design, product design and development, they would require you to have a degree in um, double E or relevant um, field. But if you talk about mechanical, there is a possibility that you can look into uh, some of the um, the uh, manufacturing related discipline 
or even into some of the um, package design. So in that regard, I would say uh, there are some opportunities involved, but not specifically into the product um, design development side. Okay. All right. So probably the next question comes in would be, will there be any job opportunities for fresh graduates without an engineering degree or accounting and finance? Well, the short answer is yes. Now, the long answer is that um, if you look at Intel, Intel does have the shared services, the supporting groups as well, um, just to give you a feel of it, even like, um, you know, trainings, um, IT. So there are groups that will still have openings. But um, again, I will encourage you to write in and someone will get in touch with you. Okay, the next question comes in would be, uh, how has the introduction of the M1 chip affected Intel? I will put it this way, all right. Um, in this industry, it's all about competition, okay? Today, it could be M1. Tomorrow, it could be something else. And in a way, even Intel is out there affecting some other company too. So really, if you ask me, my perspective is very simple that, you know, it's really up to us to continue to develop the uh, best product possible so that, you know, Intel can continue to be uh, a, a strong competitor in the market. Okay, hopefully that answered the question uh, from one of the Denise, all right, so probably one last question for Yet Fun right here because we are time short. So probably the last question would come in, probably this is, would be our ex-intern, Timothy. So Timothy, hope you are doing very Hello, well. Hello, Timothy. <laughs> all right, so, so he is actually asking, technical graduate training program, will it be done remotely or virtually or we are required to be physically present in Penang or Kulin? Um, there are a lot of um, discussion are still going on. In fact, you know, to be very honest, today we do not have a clarity yet on um, the way we work specifically um, second half of 2021 onwards. So stay tuned, you know, as we have any um, clearer direction down the road, I'm sure, you know, Kawai will also reach out and then um, close the loop. Okay, all right, so probably we are on the dot for uh, Yetfun sharing for an as well as Q&A. If we have missed any question of yours, probably it's due to time constraints, so probably you can actually uh, have a chat, send me a note, so I'm actually probably going to reply you separately. So uh, without further ado, so probably I would be actually uh, passing this session to uh, the next moderator, who is Teresa who will be actually be the moderator for the next sharing, who is actually from the accounting and finance. Thank you. Thank Kawai. you, everyone. All right, thank you. Teresa, over to you. Thank you, Kawai. Thanks, Yetfun, for the sharing. It's really very insightful. So um, let me share my screen as well as my video. So uh, thanks everyone for being with us today. So here we go on our second agenda for today. So we are very delightful to have uh, Ms. Chia Po Chun, which is our Intel Malaysia Shared Service Center Accounting Controller. Um, she actually managed uh, a various of close and reporting activity across multiple locations in the Shared Service Center. For your information, Po Chun has been with in Intel for 27 years now, and across her career, as well as her growth in Intel finance, she has been uh, in 15 different roles in the Intel finance as of today. So with her career growth, as well as the opportunity to perform rotation in Intel finance, um, here we are um, to have Kochun today to share with us around Intel Malaysia, as well as Intel finance. Over to you, Kochun. Meanwhile, I'll share my screen on the material. Okay.
right? So over to you, Puchun. Puchun, I think you are muted. Can you hear us? Hello. Yes, sorry. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Puchun. So, yep. um, but um, I think the video seems to be in a upside, upside down, right? Yeah. yeah. So how do what do I need to do? <laughs> Maybe that's logistic. Uh. Wafi, would you be able to help? Uh, yep. Okay. Hi guys. Uh, so we have some issues here going on. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go for a short break. We'll be playing a short Intel video. Uh, no. Okay. Good now. Okay. Nice to fix that. Okay. All right. Nice. Well, thank you. So over to you, Pachin. Right. Okay. Um, thanks. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, second sessions. Uh. Probably, uh, we seems I have quite similar uh, package like introducing uh, Intel, right? Uh, one of the key things I, like uh, Teresa mentioned, right? I joined Intel almost like 26 years. Uh, first job since I graduated many, many years ago, right? And so far, I really enjoy working with this company and also seeing like how this company like hey, continue grow uh, stronger and stronger and bigger, right? And uh, recently, like what uh, your phone share, right? I think uh, the competition is becomes uh, tougher, but de but definitely, I think the uh, business is actually getting much better, right? The world is actually changing uh, to be more uh, technology uh, savvy. So over that, uh, we just have a change to our purpose of this uh, company. Right, this is uh, since last year when uh, our CEO uh, came on board. Right, our purpose is actually to create a world changing technology that enrich the lives of every person on earth. I, I really like this tagline, right? Uh, for my 26 years in Intel, what I can share with you, like, hey, I really witnessed how Intel's uh, technology has been changing the life of everyone on earth. For many years ago, I still remember this commercial, this advertisements on video, right? Uh, probably I think uh, we have uh, a lot of young people here, right? If you go back to chat with your parents' uh, generations or even your grandparents' generation. Many years ago, as we use computer, we have to carry along with us with uh, many cable, right? Uh, that is uh, not so uh, smooth for connections and all those things. And I remember I saw this uh, advertisement that really uh, inspired me, right? That uh, when we started to go wireless, that is probably like more than 10 years ago already, right? Uh, when we started to go wireless, you just have your computer and then you can work everywhere without uh, worry about the connection, without worry about uh, bringing so many uh, cable with you, right? This is how, again, side weakness, how Intel change uh, uh, enrich the life right of everyone's on earth, right. So this is something why keep me uh, motivated and still continues to be with the company, right. And like I mentioned just now, right, the world is actually changing, right. Uh, for uh, the young generation like you guys, you probably born uh, this way, like hey, you can see, you probably uh, very used to use. Uh, Teresa, go to next page. Probably very used to use like hey, you have uh, your uh, cell phones, uh, laptops, and all those since very young age, right? But for our generation, right, we started with like uh, sharing the computer, right? When we were in university, 386, right? Only you can only see the computer in the computer lab, right? In the university, right? Then over time now, every household easily right uh two three five almost like everyone one two three computers uh, handhelds and all those devices are common right it's already become part of parcel of uh, our daily life right and to make this uh, successful right uh intel is definitely one of the company behind that right with a technology on many data things are moving uh, smoothly right like uh that uh Interesting ones like uh, the words uh, streaming it's probably may not be uh, maybe new to you guys, right? But I remember many years ago when we watch video, we have to wait for the streaming, buffering, and all those to happen, in, and it happens very slowly, 
right? But today, right, the technology are picking up, right? 3G, 4G, 5G, things are moving very fast, right? Uh, the famous autonomous uh, driving, right? Needs even faster data because as the car is moving, uh, you need uh, the faster speed of the data to be able to capture and uh, helping uh, navigate the uh, vehicle, right? So all in all, right, uh, the world is uh, actually uh, full with data now and it's very important, right, for everyone on earth, right, to continue enjoy the uh, benefit of having a lot of data, uh, making our life a much easier day to day, right? So, Talisa, next one. So, data is a future oil, right? And if you look at the data, right, these are three uh, key beliefs, right, for the company. And I believe uh, our engineering team probably talk about that, right? If you join the engineering team, you will probably uh, will be in the middle of all those technology, right? At AI, artificial intelligence, 5G, network uh, transformation, right? And intelligent age. Right, every uh, piece of the tools, vehicle, right, equipment, utensil, right, it's all becomes like computer, right. So at one point, people are saying like, "Hey, PC is that no one using the computer anymore." That's true, but now even the car is a become a big PC, right. Every uh, vehicle uh, things that we are using, right, has become like in more intelligent, right. That's what we call intelligent age. Next, uh, yeah. So our vision is uh, very clear, right? Uh, our purpose is that we want to uh, impact and enrich uh, every life on earth, right? And our vision is like uh, to be the uh, performance leader, trusted performance leader, unleash the potential of data. So as we mentioned, as I mentioned, right? Like vehicle, right? MRI result instantly energy management in real time, right? So all those, imagine how it helped, how it changed, right? The life of a, a future it is very clear and it's very inspiring. So our journey, right? Many, if you uh, read the history of Intel, you'll probably notice that in the past, right? We have been saying like, hey, Intel is a PC company, right? Today, uh, I'm not quite sure like what, when we talk about Intel, what do you guys have in mind, right? Uh, that is something you probably uh, want to uh, really probably study and understand more on this uh, wonderful company, right? But today, Intel is no longer a PC company, right? It, we evolve, I think, Teresa, you probably want to click again. That is a, probably a, a build, no? Oh, no. Okay, I thought, right. So, like, we are evolving, like, hey, from cloud, right, to really data, right, the edge, the cloud, the network, the 5G, and computer, it just becomes uh, one piece of it, right? So this is where the journey that uh, we are uh, moving on, right, is becomes like uh, even some more exciting and bigger uh, market share that uh, connecting all those together is definitely what Intel is uh, aiming for. And I think just now we have shared quite a bit of that, right? Uh, from a technology perspective, uh, we are probably one of the bigger one, right? Uh, the R&D investments is huge. Uh, the capital investments, right, is actually uh, the very big as well. It's a billion dollars USD, 16.2 billion USD. And our technology, right, on Semicon, uh, is actually also one of the advanced uh, compared to uh, in the market, right? So let me, this is a brief on, uh, just now I just briefly talk about our technology, right? Now you go into our business. So uh, like we mentioned, right? The storage, the compute, the network, right? The data there is a lot of uh, market opportunity. And we are in all of this business, uh, right? Uh, the compounded average uh, growth per year is actually range from 20 to 50% of all the business that we are in, 
right? Uh, we are not just a PC company, right? At least uh, if you learn nothing today, you probably go out and, and tell people, help us to tell people we are not, Intel is not a PC company anymore, right? We are a data company that we try to connect all data together, right? From compute, storage, network, and digital data created, right? Creation is where our uh, business. So you probably wonder like, hey, how big is this company, right? Uh, there is like uh, 300 billion uh, opportunity business for us, uh, right? Uh, here, the blue color is talking about our PC uh, business, right? PC is still our base, there's no doubt, right? PC and agency of PC, right? Like gaming is also become very big, right? Memory, graphic, right? That uh, traditional PC is still... Uh, definitely the big one, right? Uh, that is where we started. It continued to be a bigger, uh, the big one for us. However, over the year, right, Intel expanded to many other business, right? IoT, I, I mentioned just now, right? The edge, the modem, and that uh, network and connectivity is huge. And the bigger one is definitely on the uh, server and storage, right? The connection. Uh, whatever we say, we have a lot of data, we want things to be connected together, that is still uh, something behind, right? Making all those connected together. And this is what uh, the business opportunity for Intel. There are 300 billion of a business opportunity that we are eyeing after, right? And... Just now, we probably share quite a bit of uh, Penang and uh, Kulim, that's Malaysia. And globally, right, uh, we are a global company, right? And we have a site, right, almost everywhere. Our headquarter is in Santa Clara. And in US, right, uh, we have uh, quite a bit of a, a big, uh, quite a few of big sites, right, on our fat, uh, fat plant. And then uh, Costa Rica, Ireland, Israel, China, Vietnam, right? These are all uh, big manufacturing sites that we have uh, for Intel. And definitely, there are also a sales and marketing uh, uh, office, right, in uh, many uh, countries as well, right? Like Korea, Japan, uh, Indonesia, uh, even like in many of the Europe countries. Right, so this is, uh, you can see the color, right? The blue ray is a wafer fab, and then assembly test uh, is, assembly and test is uh, a lighter blue, and the light blue is test only. Uh, these are uh, the footprint of uh, uh, Intel. And one thing, uh, by sure, right, because we are a global company, for my 26 years of Intel, uh, I actually, uh, just renew my visa like, about three, five, three years ago. And you know, when you apply for US visa, you have to provide the, uh, the history of your, your US trip, right? And it's a surprise to me. I went to US almost 20 times, almost like one trip per year that I have been, uh, been to US, right? So this is one of the uh, assignments to work in global company. And Intel is actually very, opens and very connected globally uh, for technology transfer, for training our people, for uh, connecting with uh, uh, the head office and all those things, right? So this is one thing that I, I feel very good, like really opening out my uh, viewpoint, my exposure to many countries uh, after, join, after, uh, for after 20 plus years with the company. So financial result, right? Uh, probably, uh, we, like we, I mentioned just now, right? The uh, uh, business is actually very competitive now. But having said that, right? Uh, probably we may heard like, hey, Intel seems like uh, not sure where are we and all those things. But I would say like, if you look at our financial result, if you go back to our financial statement, uh, you, you can see like, uh, this is still a very financially uh, strong company. La. Right, we our cash is actually rich. Uh, our business is still growing, right, year over year, right. It, this is like seventy five uh, billion company, right, very big company, right. And uh, we actually gave a quite a high year of a dividend. 
right? So overall, like for many years, uh, Intel still stay very uh, strong. Definitely, there is ups and down. Uh, business changes. Uh, but as we get our act together, right? Intel's continue to stay strong, right? For close to like uh, twenty eight, thirty years. Oh no, for uh, fifty two, fifty two, fifty three years already. <laughs> I'm missing lost count on the years, right? Okay, global impact. So if you have any questions, uh, please write it down and later we will have a Q&A session that I will try to answer your question, right? Yeah, on the other hand, right, uh, as a, a successful company, uh, Intel is not just focusing on making money, right? In, uh, on the other part of the uh, company, right, we are very uh, responsible to ensure that we contribute back to the society, right? So RISE, uh, this is one of the program uh, and strategies that like, very important for Intel, right? Many years ago, Intel already committed to use that uh, like, fee uh, material, right? And consciously like uh, just now, uh, your phone share, right? Uh, Intel's uh, contribute uh, a lot to the society. And as an employee of Intel, right? From time to time, if we are passionate about that, right? You can see the picture and all those, right? Uh, we have a, a group of people that uh, always like, go out to help the community. So, uh, so as like uh, COVID-19 respond, right? Uh, not only uh, supporting our old employee, right? Uh, I'm from finance department, right? And as we have a factory operations in uh, Penang, uh, we are actually very cautious uh, to ensure that hey, we don't bring unnecessary populations to uh, the site, right? So that we want to ensure that our factory operations continue to be safe, continue to operate at a higher uh, standard of uh, social distancing, right? So finance, uh, some of the support group, right? You may not need to go to the site, right? So we have been working from home since... Uh, uh, beginning of a March, even earlier than Malaysia MCO lockdown, right? So this is how fast, how fast that we take actions on what needs to happen. And with that, right, uh, not to mention that the page here, right, where Intel uh, sponsor and support the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, needs, uh, as employee, we also feel very good, right? All of us uh, get uh, working from home, we get a sponsor of a, a high quality uh, chair that make our working from home environment as good as a office environment, as well as the adjustable table that you can move out and down, monitor uh, mouse and all those, right? To, for us to support, uh, to support us to set up our uh, very comfortable home office. <laughs> So this is one thing like uh, as an Intel employee, we uh, always uh, say about that, right? Yeah. Uh, for some part of the world and some people, they probably worry they may uh, not, they may lose their job. But for us, other than that, eh, we are with a very good company. We are getting also a lot of support from company to make our life, our working from home environments uh, even better, right? Okay, so this is what I uh, we believe in Intel, right? Uh, from our uh, founder, co-founder, Robert Noyce. Don't be encumbered by history. Go off and do something wonderful. Uh, this is one thing that really keep Intel uh, moving, right? For many years, right? For this 50 plus year. Uh, definitely, uh, if you guys uh, read through the history of Intel, you know like hey, there are years that like, Intel may have challenges, right? Uh, that uh, like uh, memory days, uh, earlier days of the Intel, right? To like a hey, laptops uh, day when uh, desktop being uh, like getting less important, right? But Intel actually went through it stronger and, and stronger, right? So this is where the key statements that every one of us uh, remember. In Intel, uh, you don't come in even finance, right? I mean, some people may have ideas like, hey, for finance, you'll probably just uh, perform your tasks and, and manage a spreadsheet, 
right? But I can assure you, uh, Intel Finance uh, doesn't work that way, right? Uh, it's always asks you to think, what can we do it differently? How can it be better? How can it uh, do it faster, right? This is the environment, uh, very challenging, very exciting to keep us uh, continue moving. Okay, so now I go down to finance, right? Uh, in, in finance, right? Uh, they are. This is a, a new uh finance charter, right? Uh, the more important for us, like we are all shareholder of Intel. If you work for Intel, you will get a share allocation, and we are all shareholder of Intel. And we are very clear of our charter is like a hey, continue create and capture shareholder value, right? Uh, we do things like a. Hey, owner's mindset, right? We do things to always think like, hey, if I own a company, do I do this, right? Do I waste money on this way and all those things? This is how Intel continue, uh, Intel Finance continue pushing ourselves to uh, support the business, right? Not just like hey, closing the book, uh, I post my JE and that's done, right? This is not our job, right? Our job is always ensuring that like, if I can do it in two minutes, I will do it in two minutes. I will not spend 10 minutes to do it, right? I will uh, do perform my cross or financial reporting in a timely and high quality way. And uh, always like keep learning, like people that make a difference, right? Operate with integrity. Uh, one thing different, yeah, operate with integrity. This is uh, important, right? Uh, I have not worked in other company before like outside. But one thing like for you guys, uh, for your decisions of a career, you probably need to consider that, right? Because we, I heard from my colleague, like uh, a lot of that work for some company and especially in finance, right? They can ask you to uh, post certain entries certain way, right? But in Intel, uh, we only do it if it's, uh, it, there is a high integrity behind, right? We always take a more conservative approach, right, to ensure that financial statement is uh, legally happen, right? So this is one thing that like, align with my value, like if else uh, you will feel very bad, right, if someone asks you to do something that may not seem legal, but that is one thing that like, by sure it never happened in Intel. Okay, uh, yeah, a similar one, uh, Intel uh, try to actually recapture our culture and uh, value. And these are few six uh, culture value, right? Uh, that Intel has in the middle. And it's the same thing like for finance, right? Uh, that driving against, uh, driving uh, towards uh, strengthen the value of the company that all of us are coming together, right? Uh, we believe like uh, we may have a higher, new hire or uh, employee from a different background, like, like uh, Malaysia, right? Like that Malay, Indian, uh, Chinese, uh, there's overseas grad, there's local grad, right? All those uh, diverse uh, backgrounds uh, is where it brings a different perspective on table for a better decision, right? And we do expect like, hey, this is a company that fearless, true and transparency, right? There is no uh, news that you're probably high, you, uh, you notice that like, some transaction is wrongly captured, you just keep quiet, you worry if you uh, tell your supervisor, your supervisor will scold you. Uh, no, right? <laughs> this is one thing that we encourage, right? If something wrong, share, right? And then we learn and we move on, right? If we, everything's like cover up uh, and then uh, hopefully people don't see it, that is not our culture and that is not our value. La. Right, and we believe in learning, like grow mindset. Okay, next one. Yeah, so ethic and compliance, right? So that's why I, I just mentioned this is something that very important in Intel, right? If you uh, feel that you are this type of people, this is exactly this company's uh, principle as well. Do the right thing, see something, say something. Right, we never tolerate any ethic and uh, legal compliance uh, issue. Okay, now go back to uh, Intel Malaysia, 
right? I think I probably may not want to share this. This one just now we just share quite extensively how uh, Intel Malaysia have grown, right? And shared service center as finance is part of shared service center, right? I think go back, yeah. So I probably go a little bit side, uh, deeper on that and I noticed there was a question, I, I mean, go back. Yeah, there was question on this as well. Yeah, Intel is definitely an engineering company, there's no doubt. And we have a lot of engineer uh, uh, requirements, like resources, uh, needs and all those. But on the other hand, like what we mentioned, uh, for every successful company, there is also a very big uh, backbone, right? Uh, the HR, finance, uh, planning, material purchase, right? And uh, Malaysia is actually quite a big uh, shared service center for uh, Intel, right? Easily you count on the uh, resources we have here is easily more than uh, seven, 800 uh, people, right? So we have quite a big of uh, many of these jobs, right? Uh, that related to kind of like traditionally we call support, right? But we are doing the growth and everything for almost globally, right? So next one. So this page is not talking about Intel. This page is probably I asked to ask them to put it here and would like to share with a, a student here, right? As you guys think about that, just now we talked about how exciting the world has been changing, right? how exciting like, hey, the computing is at every age, right? But have you ever think about like, okay, how is that difference in your job, right? Uh, finance is not engineering, that's true, right? Why are we still feeling exciting with all those technology changes, right? And I believe many of you probably heard about that and read about the story as well, right? That a few uh, a good... Uh, a lot of this message on the Facebook and social media, right? Like, oh, the top 10 job going to be eliminated, right? And finance is one of them. Oh, yep. <laughs> right? Uh, lawyer is one of them. Yes. Uh, yes and no, right? So, specifically, I put the uh, this one here, right? The 10 trends to watch right now, right? The job changes, right? The scaling of the job, maybe, I mean, we need a rescaling. The job will definitely very, very different now, right? Uh, when I came out to work, right, as accountant, uh, and in school, right, what you learn, what you read is that, hey, you have a ledger, right? You have a GL. Uh, it, the GL is a long uh, book, right, that you put your T account together and all those things. But you come to Intel, it's like, oh, where is my book? <laughs> right? There's no T account, there's no book, right? And there's still, we still call that T account, right? Uh, and a lot of the transaction is actually happening behind, right? The SAP system and all those things, right? And more so for you guys, uh, especially these uh, few years, right? Uh, I attended a conference uh, on the shared service centers uh, company coming together. And like three years ago in the conference, uh, everyone said, hey, I want to do RPA, right? Robotics uh, automation. And everyone struggled, right? I do not know how to do that. Three years far forwards, Fast forward three years now, right? Oh, every company going, oh, I have five robots. I have uh, 1,000 robots. I have 500 robots. So you can see the pace of change is as fast as what we ju I just shared, right? The technology changes, right? So you can see like hey, here, right? Digital skill set is uh, uh, important, right? AI is not just impacting the engineering, but it does impact us in finance as well. Right, we automate almost every task that can be repetitive. Right, there's no more traditional uh, finance uh, accounting job, right, using the book and all those. SME, maybe, right, but Intel is actually one of the company as we are tech company, right, in our finance. We are very ahead in investing uh, AI, right, in our day-to-day uh, -day operation, right. So, isn't it that's is fun? <laughs> so this is one thing like uh, that you probably will get from this company, like not just a traditional accounting learning. But on the other hand, of course, like accounting is still accounting, right? The technical knowledge of the standard of uh, uh, IFRS and all those is still very important. Uh, but the way we manage that is different. And analytical skill become very, very important, right? As we have all the data, data is greener down. How do you analyze like things can go wrong, right? 
So isn't it that is exciting? <laughs> so this is uh, um, our finance, uh, Malaysia finance uh, journey, right? Uh, we have uh, three uh, principles. One is the uh, Lean Six Sigma, right? We practice uh, Lean. Lean is very important uh, uh, process, right? For uh, uh, organization which is heavily uh, process related like finance or, or back office, uh, right? Uh, so we are actually building up. We have 40 green belt and we are uh, building out five black belt. So for those like have interest to uh, be the process expert, right? Uh, interested to be like a hey, lean expert and all those. Uh, this is a company like, hey, we actually focusing a lot in building that capability, right? And second pillar is on analytic, right? Analytic is actually uh, like look at the data, right? Analytic is probably a little bit statistic, right? But look at the data, how do you analyze? How do you able to use the data you're based on the uh, analytic modeling, right, to model? So you can see like we are not only higher accounting uh, student, right? We also look, uh, look at like hey, the analytics and all those things. And last but not least, another part of digitalized uh, upscaling is also on the automations, uh, right? Uh, building the uh, simple programming, right? And build the small robot, right? That able to perform some of the tasks uh, for replacing uh, human, right? So this is where uh, the journey that we have been and it's a continued investment uh, for us uh, in Intel Finance. Okay, so next. So, and we are not, okay, we are not small, right? <laughs> you look at it, this is just finance, right? Intel Malaysia have more than 10,000 employees and finance itself, right? We have right, 200 uh, plus uh, to 300 employees, right? I'm from Sales Service Center. Sales Service Center is uh, uh, big, right? It's uh, the main one, right? On all the uh, process-centric uh, work. And then we do have, as we have a, a business group, right? You do, we do have like quite 20% uh, uh, of the, the business group. And then we do have like some of the traditional finance like global tax, internal audits, right? And, and all those, right? So it's not a small uh, team. Okay, let's move. Okay, so what do we do, right? I think it's the uh, same as what the uh, directions and charter, right? We uh, get keep Intel legal, right? Maximize shareholder value, uh, help Intel, right? Uh, owner's mindset, right? To stay on top of the technology uh, with our business group, partnering with our business group, right? Close the book, analyze variance and a lot of analytics, right? And drive a business decision. Definitely uh, modeling and all those, right? These are all future uh, skill that we are uh, going after. Okay. So join Intel Finance, uh, what type of job we have? Uh, definitely like what we just share the profile of our job, right? Uh, we do open internship for uh, graduate, right? That is also part of our commitment. And we also offer a job for a uh, fresh grad, right? This is also another commitment, right? Because a lot of company, they probably want to hire experienced people, training people is actually not cheap, right? Uh, but Intel has been with uh, a graduates and uh, Australia program for many years, right? And we have been able to help and uh, grow uh, many successful uh, resources, right? Uh, from uh, this pool of uh, uh, students. Right, so business analyst is accountant is one of that, and also like on the business uh, finance side lah. Right. Okay, I think that is all I have. Uh, any questions for me? Thanks, Fortune. So yeah, so uh, I'll be stop sharing the material. So yeah, Fortune, we have a few questions uh, on the queue. So probably first we go with the first questions. How long usually the hiring process will take place for Intel? So it, it depends. Uh, typically, like uh, we have actually uh, very uh, structures like pooling, uh, pool interview, right? We have like a uh, uh, recruitment drive like every quarter. And that after that process, right? After the uh, interview, uh, we probably will uh, have, uh, and we actually hire ahead. Right, because we know 
uh, with uh, about 300 people's uh, organization. Uh, we actually do expect right in the past many years, every year we hire about 40 to 50 people, right? So with that uh, agreements and approval from uh, corporations, we do hire people ahead like ahead to fill the gap and train them first, right? So it's probably one, two months uh, on the whole process. And for now, it's probably a little bit slower because now it's a year-end close, right? Everyone's busy. We get uh, the close uh, for finance. Uh, one thing is like a year-end is always very busy, right? But after close, we will uh, strategize our resources for next year. And then the hiring process will get uh, in place uh, uh, more solid, mm -hmm. more impact. Thank you, Puchin. So on the second question, so, Puchin, would you like to help us to understand more how does actually Intel support the career growth and sustaining the development? Okay, yeah. I mean, I, I would say one of the biggest benefits that I always tell people, uh, one thing that you get the most out of the company, right, out of Intel Finance is actually development, right? Uh, we first, we actually uh, mandate, right, 20% uh, of uh, people's time is actually development. Second, we have actually very uh, complete and solid development program. Like I just mentioned, like if you like Lean, you probably focus to get uh, yourself a green belt, black belt, and all those, right? And to get a green belt, it's not just like, hey, you go to attend exam, right? There's a lot of training related to green belt, right? And if you want to be uh, like technology savvy, you like to uh, program a robot and all those, there's a lot of uh, a training there for you to build your skill set and able to program a robot, right? Uh, what I don't mention just now uh, in our deck, right? It's also like, hey, you are like, you really like accounting technical. You want to be uh, technically sound, right? Knowing all the standard and all those. That's another pillar like, hey, we actually emphasize a lot, right? So this is the second one, the rich curriculum, a lot of training uh, that meet what you want to be. And thirdly, like something I'm very proud, like I believe Teresa mentioned, right? Uh, for my 20 plus year, I have been at least into 15 different uh, position, right? Uh, position doesn't mean that I promoted and get to different job, right? But it's a different uh, job that I work on. Right, and we do have a colleague like from Malaysia now currently work in Taiwan, in US, in other country, in China and other country as well. So one thing we are very proud of Intel Finance is the job rotation, right? We believe like uh, we have very rich job, right? 20, 200 plus position for you to move around, learn things uh, differently. And we are actually very open, Malaysia, site has been very big and very stable and one of the most uh, senior site, right, that we often provide uh, resources uh, to support other countries. So this is a uh, third thing that I'm very proud that how we build uh, and grow our people. Yeah, that's very true. Indeed agree with you, Puchun. So Puchun, just a follow-up questions, right? So potentially there are also students performing their, you know, professional kind of like certification. Probably would you like to elaborate more? How does the company able to continue the expand of learning in terms of professional learnings? So we are a partner's uh, company, right? A preferred employer of uh, ACCA and AICPA. So uh, I think in the past, people worry if I don't work in audit firm for three years, I don't get my charter accountant st uh, status, right? But as we are preferred employer of uh, AICPA and ACCA, uh, and with many of us, uh, actually it's a uh, MIA uh, charter accountant or ACCA charter accountant, we are all qualified to be your supervisor and to sign off and recommend you for your uh, charter accountant's uh, status. Right. Of course, uh, the difference between working in Intel in commercial versus like uh, public accounting practice, right, is that you probably may not get the practice uh, status, uh, right, but it doesn't stop you uh, to continue study uh, ACCA, right, or AICPA. Uh, in fact, we actually provide incentive if you get your AICPA exam and you score very well, you can get exam fee sponsor from the company. Thanks, Pachin. So in view of time, probably I'll take the last questions from the two. If we are unable to answer all your questions today, 
uh, we will actually respond you through the public chat box. So no worries on that. So Po Chun, so one final question. So um, we would like to know uh, what would be the advice from you, right, to for the accounting students today to continue excel in their education as well as in their career. So uh, I, I would say more important is know yourself, right? Uh, like I just shared, there are many different paths. The accountant today is actually very different from accountant in the past. Right, the old accountant is probably only have one path to be the public accountant and sign off the book. Right, you can see the accountant today is no longer just like very limited to be the traditional accountant. Right, as the shared service center grow, uh, we are actually almost like owning the whole uh, financial growth of the company. Right, and to in order to do that, there's no doubt accounting technical skill is important. Uh, there is also like some people are very good in uh, technology is also very important, like I mentioned. And as we pull all the process uh, work together, right, the business process management, BPM, LSS, right, this is also uh, another different skill on the process that is also very important, right. And not to mention, right, uh, we actually uh, mentioned, right, uh, we have an owner mindset. We run shared service center like a business. Right, so uh, for that to run like a business, you always have a, a business uh, analyst, business modeling, right? So this is another skill set that we need uh, for a finance uh, house to operate, right? And there's a lot of different opportunity. So it's for you guys to decide who are you that which area that you have interest, right? Are you the technology people? You really like to play around and want to build your uh, robot? Right, join us, right? And you can build a board that name after you, <laughs> right? Or you're a process person, you want to be a, a black belt, right? Yeah, so it, it depends like who, uh, your personality, which ones that you're passionate uh, about, right? And build that with you. Thank you, Po Chun. So thanks for your time, uh, all the talents that join us today. So we will be conducting our interview throughout the time until 6 p.m. today. Feel free to visit our booth. Our managers is available for the interview session as well as a private chat. Thanks a lot, Pochun. Thanks a lot. Thank All right. Uh, thank you very much to Ms. Yetpun and Ms. Pochun for the invaluable insight. Talents watching today will most definitely gain a better insight into life at Intel, life at Intel one of the world's most well-known brands. So we've come to the end of today's sharing session. Our sincerest apologies to all viewers if we fail to answer any of your questions. However, we'd like to invite all talents to visit Intel's virtual booth here at the Australia Career Fair and scroll through the engaging content on their page and to apply for their latest vacancies. You can also drop any questions into the public chat box and the company reps will most definitely get back to you. Keep up to date with the latest happenings at Grad One by following us at Grad One right here. So thank you very much and we'll see you soon. I'm Jerry. I'm a software engineer from Intel Malaysia. We have wonderful employees coming from various backgrounds here, which allows me to learn many skills from them. Through collaboration and mentorship programs, this allows me to structure my career path well. We usually challenge each other's ideas to make things work in a respectful manner. We even talk about our career growth and constantly propose ideas on technical issues, even during our favorite mama session. I'm Leisha and I'm a pre-silicon validation engineer. It's interesting how the diverse workforce here indirectly broadens our mind and perspective even for the smallest things. We get to exchange interesting stories with each other and it's amazing to see how everyone sees things from different point of views. These differences blossom into the form of creativity. One culture that Intel has cultivated would be its inclusiveness. My opinions and suggestions are valued and very much taken into consideration and that has made me comfortable working at Intel. Hi, 
I'm Shaimi Amira. I work as an embedded software engineer at Nita Malaysia. Working on a global team has its rewards and challenges. It has definitely added more value to my work experience in collaborating across multiple time zones and also cultural and linguistic exposures. It's all about global teamwork. Hi, I'm Nur Ain. I am a pre-silicon validation engineer at Intel Malaysia. Intel is a great place to work as it has a wonderful lineup of expertise in this industry. You will always be excited to work with the best colleague with great experience. Intel actively promotes work-life balance programs. One of my favorite programs is Intel Involved. It consists of various volunteering activities where we can contribute back to the community. 